Hey everyone, thanks so much for stopping by. I'm out here in the beautiful Piney Woods. It was a brisk 39 degrees this morning, but now it's nice. So today's finally the day. I'm bringing you my suburban camper conversion tour. Here we go. Really excited for this, so I'll start with just a quick walk around. It's a 2007 Chevrolet Suburban LS, and it's got, I bought it with about 140, 150,000 miles on it. I put a two inch leveling kit on the front, one and a half inch coil spacers on the back, Toyo Open Country AT3 tires. They are 285-70R17s in the front, I have a worn Evo winch. This is mounted with a front hitch receiver, one made by Reese Toe Power or Draw Tight, their sister company. I got a hook up here in the front for the winch, and as well as one that runs through underneath to the back. Front view camera, I'll show you later. I have a rear view camera as well. And an LED light bar by Oxbeam. Let me go ahead and flip that on for you real quick. This thing has taken me from Houston down to climb in Petro Chico outside Monterey, back to Texas, up to the western Pacific coast, up to Alaska, Anchorage, and then back down through Banff, Montana, Wyoming. Here on top, I have a shovel mounted with just a couple quick fists, a little bracket. It's actually a uh, pole mounting bracket for signs, and then a big pipe shower. I think it's about a little over 100 inches long. It holds a, somewhere between five and a half and six gallons. This bucket's right here. I have a video on how I put this together as well as the pipe shower awning and solar panels if you want to check those out. This is pretty cool. These are all lockable storage. Opens up in this one. Keep my outdoor trash, propane tank, as well as a hose for the Five foot hose for my pipe shower and the propane hose. Got a little battery power lights up here. Open it up. More lights. Camping sink. Typically, I did have a pressure cooker down here, but that's a little funny, different story. My camp stove here. Double knife magnets, which have been holding the actually hold all the knives great. Surprised me. And some cutting boards tucked in on the side. These dividers have been key. They really help keep everything organized. I'm not going to pull out the camp, camp setup right now. But I'll show you some B-roll I was cooking yesterday. One thing that's great about these cargo boxes and how I made them. I still have clearance for my rear lift gate. It's awesome. Super easy access. In order to do that, I went with lifting storage platforms here for the bed instead of drawers. We'll get to that in a minute. And coming around to this side, this is a DIY awning. I'll show you a picture here of when I had it set up down in outside Petro Chico. Rolls out, seven by nine tarp, gives me some nice shade. And I'll show you up here on the roof. This is one of my favorite projects of how it turned out. I have three 80 watt energy solar panels, cargo box, with a separate 50 watt flexible solar panel on top. I just have extra storage in here. And then I actually fit in a bike rack here that I've used only a few times, but there is room in the pipe shower. Everything just fit like Tetris. And this one over here goes to a little Jackery 300. And then the main solar system goes to my Blue Eddy AC200P. Here I'll show you my fridge setup. It's an ice co 45 liter. I took out the center console and put this there instead. It's a little bit higher than a standard uh, center console, but I decided the trade off would probably be worth it. I did realize pretty quickly once I took out the center console that I lost storage and cup holders. So I put a couple cup holders down here as well as these two trays up top over here on this side this is the back side of what's the big wall and i have my 
my spice rack, which is key for me. I like to be able to cook. And then a microwave, extra storage, cooking utensils, some non-perishables. I keep some extra toiletries, toothpaste, whatever back here. Got to have your paper towel holder. All right, let me bring you inside. So I have my bed platform. It's sitting on two by eight runners on each side going all the way down. There's three platforms of storage. The back two open from this side. So you can hold up the mattress. Some gas struts. These are all, this is all my climbing gear that I keep back here. I still have access to this little storage compartment. So that's nice. And then I will, uh, I'll show you this middle one. And then here, I got my extra long 80 meter rope, some laundry supplies. As well as an electric cooktop. That's a shout out to Hobo Tech. Um, got the idea from him and a, and a space heater that I use in a pinch. So I finished all the wood myself, a bunch of sanding, two coats of polyurethane. Really like how it came out. A little bit of that hand carved look. I just used a power carver uh, cut saw tool on my angle grinder. Yeah, so this big wall, this is kind of my case de resistance. It took quite a bit of work, but totally worth it. It's allowed me to get so much more storage and still keep the bed platform relatively low. I have these cubbies for all of my clothes. This is the Jackery 300 that runs off of the small solar panel. I'll use this to power a little fan, um, some lights, recharge my phone, whatever, if I'm sleeping on this side of bed. And yeah, this is just... Nice piece of plywood, three-quarter birch. I've been waiting to say that since I saw Kat Carney and Craig's video on their Suburban Tour, which I think on her channel they put out three or four years ago. And so this is my mattress. This is actually a tri-fold crash pad for bouldering. I did realize after my first week, man, it is too firm. So I added a two-inch memory foam topper. And I just have my sheets on there. It folds up. Oh yeah, you can see it's got the backpack straps right here. Got the fire extinguisher over here. This is pretty cool. I took off the mounting bracket and it just a uh, big strip of 3M dual lock. Put some JB Weld as well as on here. That one took me a couple tries. But now it holds solid. Over here, pretty standard. I keep quick, quick access stuff down here. Whatever, what do I got? Some ramen, can of chili, instant coffee. When I had them put in the new radio or faceplate, yeah, and this one connects straight to the receiver for Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, that kind of stuff. So then I had one extra power outlet that was just disconnected back there. I had them put it out here with this little thing that I bought on Amazon. It's solid, so I get to keep two cigarette outlets, and I converted this one to USB. All right, I'll bring y'all inside. This is a 10 gallon RV water tank is the smallest I could find. And I thought it was totally a great use of space. And I fashioned this water pump that's just intended for like those five gallon sparkless jugs. And it just keeps me from having to dump over the water, tip it over every time I want to get some water. These are actually seat back coolers, but I thought they were the perfect size. So on this side, I have my toiletries. And then the other side is all my electronics. And then I left this seatbelt in. If I'm not in your way. I'll put that seatbelt in and use that as a, as a clothesline to dry stuff. It's mostly just my towel and maybe some swim trunks. All right, and this side flips up too. Um, I have lockable storage right here. This big aluminum box. That's bolted to the original factory bolts for the seats and there's still a little bit more storage behind it where I, which is where I keep all the window covers I have some bug screens for the windows too I like to think of this as my nightstand I'll put my bottle of water there and it just gave me one more place to put things you see back here my little collapsible cup 
electric lamp, electric light that I really like that's rechargeable and a headlamp. And this is cool. I found it in another person's video. It's just a mixture of dish soap and water. And I just keep that full whenever I need to wash my hands. I have some hooks over here. I just hang some clothes. This is my laundry chute down here. And actually, let me see if I can show you. I took out the seatbelt from this side. And so there's actually quite a bit of space there where the, where the seatbelt mechanism was. I cut a little hole in there and it gave me more storage. So I keep dish soap and cleaning supplies and stuff like that down there. Here's another shot of it. And what's nice is in this cubby down, this cubby down here is where the access for the tire jack is. And there's actually a ton of room down there too. I put all my recovery gear down there, a couple of tow ropes, snatch block, microwave. I'll go ahead and fire it up for you. There you go. It just makes it so easy. <laughs> I can heat up some water and pour some, put in some instant coffee and have a cup of coffee in three minutes. It's great. Another thing that's neat, I even managed to get a little travel guitar to sneak in there. And here and on the other side, I got a little book storage. I like to call it my library. I have a little indoor trash can there for just like wrappers and stuff like that. So, and then this is the heart of the electrical operation. This is my Blue Eddy AC200P. It charges off the main solar array as well as when I'm driving, which is pretty cool. I had a professional do this. They ran straight from the battery to a fuse and to a solenoid. And that runs an inverter that's tucked in right behind the Blue Eddy in that little crevice between the angle of the seat. All I do is I plug the power brick from the Blue Eddy into that. And what's nice is the Blue Eddy has two input ports. So I have the solar power hooked up continuously as well as the power brick that's running off of the alternator when I'm driving. I do have a Wi-Fi router, which I thought was a nice luxury to have. Probably not necessary, but, and that runs off of a separate cell phone plan. Now, for some reason, I lost my audio here. Sorry about that. So I'll just jump in with a voiceover here. As far as securing the whole build out to the Suburban, you can see here that it's bolted to the factory bolts for the original seats. On top of that, it's essentially one piece construction. I built the interior in sections and then assembled it inside the Suburban with big like number 12 and number 14 screws. So it's all held together. And then finally it's connected to the factory seat belt holder on the driver's side, as well as other factory tie downs with about six other 200 pound zip ties. As far as keeping the place clean, I found just using this little brush that I found at Walmart to brush out the dirt and stuff worked best. And I have WeatherTech mats that run the entire length of the Suburban. I just cut them to size after finishing the build out. All right, so that about sums it up with the tour. I'll go ahead and run through costs real quick. I bought the Suburban for about nine grand and put about four grand of work into it. The winch setup was about a thousand and then the audio visual and electrical, including the new receiver and that kind of stuff, front and rear view camera, the hookups for the winch in the front and the back, as well as the hookup for the inverter to charge my Blue Eddy off of alternator charging. That kind of got away from me a little bit, so that was about $3,000 too. The leveling kit and the rear coil spacers and that installation as well as the new set of tires, that came around to about $1,500, $1,600. I ended up having about $800 worth of tools and supplies to do the build. And then with all that, the rest of the build put together, the total cost me around $28,000 to $32,000, somewhere in there. And that's about it. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. If you want to support the channel, all that's listed below. You can subscribe or join my Patreon. Hope you enjoyed the tour. Hope you got something out of it. Thanks for following along this far in the video. Good luck with your builds, and I'll catch you all next time. Mm -hmm.